Hey, 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 you know what today is. Sisterhood check-in coming right up at 10 p.m. Make sure you set your clocks, get your popcorn, get your pen and paper, call up your girlfriends, and tell them Sisterhood check-in is about to start. See you in a few minutes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sisterhood Check-In. I am your author and coach, Nadira Lewis, and it is Friday. woo Yet another day, February 25th, for us to be able to live and breathe and have our being. So thank you so much for joining me each and every Friday at this time at 10 p.m. I know it's late. But I promise that you are going to have an amazing time. So get your girlfriends on the phone and say, hey, Sisterhood Check-In is on the air. Make sure if you are watching us via YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the notification button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new video. If you are watching us via Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, Make sure you click like and share if you are blessed by the content that we provide each and every Friday. So I'm excited, guys, because my guest tonight is an amazing longtime friend. I've known her for many, 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 many years. She is a doctor, wife. She's a mother. She's an author. She's, oh my gosh, I'll let you to hear from her all the wonderful things that God is doing in our life. And I cannot wait to hear all the wonderful things that God is doing. So I'm going to play a video real quick. And after this video, the next video you will see will be that of Monica Johnson. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to Sisterhood Check-In, and I have with me my special guest, Dr. Monica Johnson. Woo! Welcome to Sisterhood Check-In. How are you? 
I am well. Um, could complain, but won't complain because it could be worse. So the opportunity to be able to help others um, always counted all joy, no matter the circumstance or the situation. Well, that's amazing. It takes a strong person and somebody sound like somebody done been through some stuff to be able to say that real bold and still go through <laughs> some things. You better say that. <laughs> that's the truth. That is so true. Not so many people can actually say that and be and yeah. do it with a smile and be confident. Sometimes we say it with a smile, but deep down, we there may be some wounds that are there that are keep it that are kind of like suppressing and it, uh -huh. we can we can hold it up for a little while. Yep. So, Monica, talk or Dr. Monica, should I say? Talk to us about who you are and how did you become this awesome woman of God? So first and foremost, you know, I am a child of God. I have been saved for real, for real. Yes. <laughs> it's, okay, it's, that's important to be for real. It's January um, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, got saved when I was younger. Um, but as I got older, I had a full understanding Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm married, um, been married to my best friend for 24 years to be next month. Um, and uh, we've been together for 25, two kids, but I'll talk about a little bit of that. But overall, an African-American girl that grew up on the east side of town. Um, I am the second oldest of a family of five. Mm -hmm. um, I am that go to person, that glue person um, that always tried to keep my family together. And gelling mm. together. Yeah. I am um, my grandparents, both sets are no longer here, but they were very strong in my life as far as pushing me, encouraging me. Um, and you know, it's kind of sad that they're not here now to see me. But yeah. what I always say is that because of them, I can stand on their shoulders. Um, mm. my parents were teenage parents, but they always instilled a lot in us, uh, very strict. <laughs> but I said, I thank God for that strictness because it kept me out of, it, it kept me out of the jailhouse. It kept me, you know, from mm -hmm. corners. It kept me from, you know, just being in places that you shouldn't be in, in, in opportune times. Um, been in school or, you know, education has always been a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I actually started in the medical field at age um, 18, right out of high school oh. um, as a CNA. So one thing that pushed me to kind of get to where I am is that I had one individual to tell me one person can never make a difference. This individual was an older CNA, you know, probably not happy with where she was, but I've always been a type of person to look past a situation, a circumstance, and always try to encourage someone. And, you know, oftentimes with my bishop, um, he often, and even my first lady would say, your name means something. And so years ago, I looked up to see what my name meant, and it means um, encourager, mm. educator. Um, and I've always, um, it empowers me to empower others um, mm. by what I may say, what I may do. And I tell people, don't think that it's, it's always easy because of where you see somebody at. You always had to go through something to get where you are. But if you're tired of being where you are, what are you willing to do to get past where you are? Right. Mm. God has allowed me to be the first of many um, in many different things in my life. A lot of things people don't know about me. When I was younger, I used to double dutch. Um, we were sitting state champs for six years for the state of Florida. These knees won't let me do it now. <laughs> but, um, that leader type of mentality um, was even there then. Didn't know it, but I just was never one to sit and wait for someone uh, to do something or say what you could and couldn't do. Mm -hmm. I always took ownership or I took mm -hmm. lead. And mm -hmm. I often encourage and I tell people this. A lot of times businesses, companies, organizations and people and even families are looking for someone to lead without asking them to lead. You mm -hmm. can't teach those things. You have to have the know how. But in order to lead, you have to have known how to follow. That's mm -hmm. what I can fall behind cool. as well. So I crawled the ladder um, from CNA. Mm -hmm. Um, I did that for a couple of years, went for ultrasonography. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a cosmetologist. <laughs> wow. Um, and then I went for LPN and it was so ironic with the piece for LPN. I was working at St. Vincent's at the time as a stress tech and I had applied for the LPN program, but didn't get in. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was a little discouraged, you know, had a new baby at home. I think my daughter was five months old. Husband was a truck driver, always on the road. 
And so what happened was somebody um, didn't take their seat. So they sent me information and said, okay, if you're wanting to get in, you've got to have this money in by this date. The program is going to start on that date. When I tell you God allowed things just to line up in order where the finances was there, I was able to rearrange my schedule, but sacrifices had to be made. I'm sure. I you know, pretty much worked um, 16 hours every Saturday and Sunday in a nursing home as a CNA, and I would go to school Monday through Friday. So did LPN, took my boards. And before I even took my boards, God had given me a vision showing me um, me standing outside the place where I had to go and take the exam. The outfit that I had on was the same exact outfit and I could see past, immediately past that test. Then years, you know, kind of took me a couple of years in between time. I would take prereqs here and there between working, you know, being a mom. And so FSCJ, had a bridge program that they, mm -hmm. you know, kind of got restarted. So it was a program with LPNs and paramedics that were trying to bridge to become an RN. Now, mm -hmm. let me tell you, at that time we were living, um, you know, in a different home. And um, the night before I took my, kin my kids into bed, came downstairs and slipped on the second stair before the mm -hmm. bottom. My oh legs my completely from under me, I, you know, hit the ground and it hit my tailbone. I could immediately tell that I had a fractured oh tailbone. Um, I lost consciousness. I was able to get up, get myself together. The next day I was due to take two exams for the RN program. The morning that I am leaving, I'm already in pain. If anybody has ever had a fractured tailbone, it hurts to sit for any amount. Yes, of time. I know I had one. Girl, Listen, yes. and there's nothing they can really do for you, right? Ooh. And so I had the kids in the back seat because I had to take Maya to school. She was getting ready for FCAT or something. And yeah. then my son was going to be going to daycare. Now, anytime I would bike out of the garage, I would say a prayer, hit the garage door button, and that's it. Well, that particular morning, I'm assuming because I was in so much pain, I wasn't really thinking straight. I hit it again. Oh and when I hit God. it again and began to back out, it kind of hit on the truck and damaged the garage. So I couldn't get out. Wow. <laughs> Nobody was able. I, I called friends, mm. family, sister, I couldn't get the kids, take me to go take this exam. So a family friend was actually homesick with the flu. I called him. He came. He got the kids. And my other friend, Kim, Kim Clayton, mm -hmm. um, she actually was en route to come get me, but I was able to get out by then. Mm -hmm. We get there. We take the exams. These exams were so horrible. I just knew I did not pass it. Wow. So we went over to the nursing department and um, I, told, I, told, I told the young lady, I said, listen, I prefer to go ahead and get my money back for the second test. I don't think I did too good on the first test. That worker told me, she says, listen, no matter how good or bad you thought you did, go mm -hmm. ahead and take that second test. A ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. Took that second test and was in the program. Took my boards, passed my boards, and then I went on to get my bachelor's from JU. Um, I got my master's from Kaplan University with my first certification as an NP. And then I decided to do the doctorate program for nurse practitioner. It was a dual program, including psych, to get my second certification. Now, with my DNP, you know, I tell people different levels of education comes with different responsibilities. Um, with this particular program, the school, as we know, is predominantly, you know, one over the other. Mm -hmm. And um, I applied for the program, and it was only 12 people that they, that they were letting in, right? 12 wow. disciples. Yep. I was able to get in. And I had a, um, a psychiatrist. He passed away some time ago, but he wrote me a letter of reference. And to me, it was so heartfelt because you never know what somebody else thinks of you. Especially mm -hmm. when you're doing what you do from your heart and you mm -hmm. do it with passion. Yeah. And so his letter was one of the letters that I did use. So I was able to get into the program. Now, let me tell you, every level in education, just like every level with a blessing, you're going to be faced with opposition of some sort. But I've learned that oppositions aren't to stop you. Oppositions is to help you build your character to keep going. Mm. 
And so um, as I got toward the end of that program, and mind you, I was going to school um, full time, working three jobs, two kids, married, the whole nine. So toward the end of the program, one of the professors said, um, you know, Monica, if you keep doing work this way, you'll never pass your boards. You'll never be a psych MP. <laughs> wow. So what I told her at that point, I said, that you will not speak over my life. Mm -hmm. I said, though, that I'm not disrespectful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, disconnect this call and I'll reach out to someone that is wanting to help me. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. It's okay. I said, it's okay. Wow. Let me show you how God worked. With that program, the DNP slash Psych NP, that was the first program that UNF ever had. I was complete. I had completed all of my work hours and everything two months prior to this time to graduate. Wow. Then they told me, well, you can't take your boards early because the program isn't done. Or if you do take it, you've got to go and take this course and da 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 da. Now, mind you, this course was in Miami. This course was maybe like five hundred and something dollars. Wow. Yes, I got off work that day. I said no problem. My husband drove me down there, and God is so good. It was storming, wow. raining. It rains from Jacksonville to Miami. We get to the hotel. They gave our room away because we were late. They put us somewhere else, which was a horrible place. But I said, okay, it is what it is. We get back to the hotel the next day. They comp us. So we didn't have to pay for anything. That was a blessing for one. Mm -hmm. Two, got through the course, da, 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 da. Signed up to take my test, passed my boards the first time. Then I became the first mm -hmm. African-American female to pass boards for their DNP psych program. That same professor that told me what I would never be had to eat her words and offer me a position as, wow. a, as the adjunct professor for somebody that you told would never be able to do. Mm. So I have learned that I don't go by what people say. Um, and a lot of times I'm, I'm learning not to even go by what I see. Mm. I'm learning to lean on more of what God is telling me and when he's telling me to move and when he's telling me to sit still. Um, for anybody that is like wanting to go to school, want to further your education or just wanting to make a move, make sure it's your season to do so. Mm. Make sure that you're willing to give up some things. Make sure you're willing to know that when much is given, much is required. And so with our children, you know, it's a blessing because our daughter is 23. Our son is 20. Our daughter became, she finished her BSN degree to, uh, to become a nurse. Um, she had just turned um, 21. Wow. The school that she went to, I was teaching at that school. When they hired me, um, I think I was I was there before she came. So when she came to the school, I let them know. I only let one person knew, um, and that was the dean, that my daughter was going to be a student there. I didn't tell anybody else. I didn't want her to get special treatment. Mm. So once she got into the program and, you know, she made friends and they're on Facebook, some of the students can see that I was her mom. So I stopped taking assignments. So I had some of the teachers, you know, one of the teachers called me and she said, well, you know, Dr. Johnson, why don't you let me know? Da, da, da. I said, there was no need to know. What was the difference of you knowing versus not knowing? Because I want her to get this education and have an understanding for herself because yeah. she's going to be responsible for taking care of patients, right? Mm. When I tell you my daughter is one of the best nurses I have seen for her age, um, her skill set, her knowledge base. And even when she went on an interview, uh, one of the, the, the ladies was a nurse manager at the hospital where she went to interview. And um, at that time, she didn't take the job for, you know, whatever reason. But she said that Emaya was so mature. She said that it was just something about her. When she found out that was my daughter, she said, that's it. That's it. And let me tell you how the favor wow. of God is. And I tell people, favor is always fair to the believer. To the unbeliever, it might not be. Mm. One of the nurses um, that I used to come across at the hospital that she works at, um, we used to come in contact when I worked at a shelter. I would go and um, assess you know, clients to come in. If they were too sick to be um, discharged to the streets, but not sick to stay in the hospital, they would come into the shelter. And so this particular young lady, we had a good rapport. Anybody knows me, I can make a friend with anybody. That's just how I am. 
-hmm. And so um, my daughter wound up working on this particular unit and this particular nurse was also a nurse on this unit. Didn't know that was my daughter until she found out that was my daughter. When I tell you they took such good care of her, wow. where that mentality of the old tries to eat the young, got the best care that she could get, um, best assistance that she can get. And then with my son, you know, we have to be careful what we pray for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's for sure. And so with him, I mean, honestly, and I laugh about it now. I really didn't know which way he was going to go because he was so um, he was so engulfed in baseball, like from seventh grade um, up to high school. And so with him, I promise you, from kindergarten to his senior year, I would have to do a parent teacher conference, not because he was disruptive, but just it was always something. <laughs> and the boys. And I, I said, I, I just don't get it. And I told him, I said, son, it can't be them all the time because you're the common <laughs> denominator. But we knew putting him in baseball kind of connected him. So mm. he knew if he was misbehaving, then you can't play ball, right? Mm. Now, let me tell you this. As parents, we do have to pay close attention to our children. We have to go behind those closed doors. We have to be getting, you know, social media, get in their face a little bit, know who they hanging with. His senior year, he, um, you know, he decided he wanted to go off to play baseball. I'm like, okay. My desire was for him to stay home or find school somewhere here. And some parents be like, let those kids live. Nah, 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 nah. First of all, I take care of individuals and I see psychiatric clients. They have gone off and things happen. Not to say it happens to everybody, but everybody right. knows their child. Right? All right. And so I was like, Lord, I just want him to stay close to home. And then the pandemic happened. Baseball was one of those sports where it didn't bounce back as quick as others did. Mm -hmm. And so the Firefight Explorer program, he was in, I think, his junior year in high school. And see, a lot of things parents don't know about that the cities or states they're in offer. So he was able to change his love for baseball to firefighting. But in between that time with COVID, I kind of felt him distancing himself a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of noticed some things like depression of some sort. And so I just really made sure I talked to him more because what he began to do was like TikTok, um, videos, and people have to understand when people are dealing with depression, they want to make other people laugh because they're crying inside. Mm -hmm. So I had to really make sure that this was a positive coping skill for him and not a facade of something that was going to be worse, you know, come down the line. So mm -hmm. he was able to get into the EMT program, firefighter one and two. It was completely paid for with the program he was in, um, you know, and now he's a firefighter getting ready, you know, to get on the force, uh, preferably, you know, this coming, oh. um, you know, next two months or so. But one thing that my son does and, it really makes me tear up sometimes because be careful and know that our children do watch us. Yes, they do. Time he would have an exam. He go get the oil. Really? He goes and get the oil. And this is the thing. There was an incident a couple of years ago with my son where he just blew up. I mean, just, and I was like, what is going on? And what I had to remember was a couple of weeks prior to that, he came and sat next to me. He sat on the floor next to me. And he says, Mom, I need you to pray for me. And I said, boy, go pray for yourself. You know how to pray for yourself now. You know, you. you. Yeah. So I learned after that, anytime my kids ask for prayer, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to put it down and we're going to pray. Right. I'm glad to know my kids know prayer changes things. Mm. I'm glad to know that they can see us by examples and not just what I'm saying. And a lot of people look and say, oh, y'all got it all together. Y'all, you know, you do what you do. Your husband do what he do and y'all kids. But nobody knows, like, you know, those times of being on your knees, those times of crying and seeking out and refraining yourself from people, things and places. People don't get that. And I tell my clients all the right. time, just because I have on a white coat don't mean I haven't been through anything. And so. This thing we call life, you know, it, it, it can really take us down some dark roads sometimes. But I thank God that he's allowed me to be in a place where I can help people, even myself, deal with mind, body and spirit. 
any job I've ever been on, there's never been an issue where I can't talk about Christ. I can't pray with somebody that wants to pray. Um, and I think that is a powerful thing. Being dual certified as a nurse practitioner, I can help people from medical and from psych. And people have to know those things are real. But there's some cultures that still are kind of hesitant about, you know, going to get care. If COVID has taught us nothing else, this is no time for hesitation. If something is going on, seek help. Mm -hmm. If something don't seem right, seek help. But the thing is, you have to seek the right help. The right help. Every place that you go is not the right place for you. Because a lot of these companies are, you know, so um, they're on like a puppet string from insurance companies. Mm -hmm. You know, clients will say, well, they only came in for five minutes and talked to me. A lot of providers will want to do more, but we have restraints. And then it's if you work in a nonprofit versus, you know, profit. Nonprofit, a little bit more leeway, but you're dealing with more chronic individuals with more chronic issues. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's an ever involving or evolving type of atmosphere or environment but when i tell you i love it i love it wow i had the um the coo at my job the other day asked me he says doc why do you do what you do and what i told him was is that this was mentioned to me some years ago and it always stuck with me i want the work i do today to speak for me well after i'm gone but I need that work to be good work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Can do some things that's not right. Right. So what will somebody remember you for? And so I had a um a heart ablation done last year. And that's when they go in and deaden a portion of the heart if you have heart arrhythmias. And I promise you, laying on that table, I was like, my God, if this was it, God. <laughs> Wow. I mean, you know, yeah. I was like, wait, I, I still want to see my daughter get married. I want to see my son get married. I want to grow old with my husband. I want to do all these things. Yeah. But what if that was it? You know what I mean? I've prepared them, I feel, to the best of my ability. Um, but God does the rest. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we have to look at this. Where you are now, is that where you're supposed to be? Is it more that you're required to do? And if it is, are you willing or are you unwilling? Mm. I think we have too many unwilling people that are waiting for somebody else to be their pusher. Right. I, I can motivate you. I, I can't call you. You know what I mean? I agree. So that's one of the beautiful things about psychiatry is that a lot of the clients I deal with, substance abuse, um, behavioral health, primary care, all those type of things, they're all connected. Something attaches to something else. And I had a young lady um, that was a client of mine the other day, and this really made me tear up. When I used to work for um, the health department years ago, her daughter was a patient of mine. And when she saw me the other day, at the end of her visit, she said, I know you. I said, you know me from where? <laughs> And she pulled down her mask and I just got up and hugged her. Her daughter was my patient. Now her daughter has a daughter. And she says, I remember you then. And she sent in um, a Google um, you know, thing and they, they sent it to me. And she said was, I want to thank everyone for helping me. They were nice. They were pleasant, educated and knowledgeable and helped me. And she said, I feel 50% better today than I did yesterday by getting the right medications now what they tried to do was put her on meds they weren't the right meds and nobody explained to her or educated her and i tell people you don't have to take what somebody gives you let them explain to you why you're taking it what's the side effects and how long i may need to be on it and make sure your diagnosis meets what they're trying to prescribe there's right. a sun for everything but if we don't deal with the corporate or the reason why we take the pill, we'll always right. take the pill. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. I totally agree. I totally so, agree. So, you know, it, it's just in like this butterfly behind me, I'm big on butterflies. Transition, cocoons, but it's a bridge. And, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like my duty is to bridge the gap. And that's mm -hmm. whether it's mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, 
I'm okay with being that person to be the glue. But I've had to learn that as much as I pour into others, I have to be willing to pour into myself. Self-care and self-love is most important because those that are attached to me, if I'm not well, how can I expect them to be well? Absolutely. And self-care is important because it's, it's to me, the foundation of mental health, taking care. Most of, uh, most of us get into I issues outside of, you know, mm -hmm. medical reasons um, or, you know, inherited reasons where there's something, you know, some other issues that are not pertaining mm -hmm. to what I'm saying mm -hmm. is because we're not taking care of ourselves. We're not taking the time to, and, and there's so, but there's been so much emphasis, especially as believers mm -hmm. to where some people feel like when they do, stop to take care of them that is that yeah. it's selfish because we are always at a servant mindset so mm -hmm. we think servant means don't take care of us just only mm -hmm. continue to give 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 not mm -hmm. realizing that you can't really give out of an empty cup you're scraping yeah. the bottom and i had to learn that for myself being mm -hmm. a person that had my hands in so many different things yeah. realizing now how important it is to take time for me Take mm -hmm. time to make sure my emotional well-being is is okay. And mm -hmm. there's practical things and spiritual things and natural things that you have to do. You have to eat right. Yeah. You have to make sure you're, yeah. you know, your uh, most people's mental health is a lot. A lot of it has to do with their diet, what they're eating. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, a lot of it is a learned behavior. And um, learned. Yes, yes. And you know, I can only speak on the African American, you know, community because I'm African American. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have strong women in our families that we've never seen them cry. We've never seen them, you know, complain. We've never seen, you know, but what we've seen is they get up and do it every day. They get up and do it every day. Mm -hmm. And with a lot of those individuals, they have a lot of chronic health conditions or they can have health conditions that they like, oh, it's nothing. But I too was one of those people where I gave, 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 gave. Somebody, you know, would call about this or I had to go here or I had to go there, I had to do this. And it was like I was making everyone's 911 my emergency. Mm. The thing in that is when you have the fixer mentality. Wow. That's, you know, pretty much what happens. But my thing is even the fixer needs to be fixed. But mm. the way you get fixed is to get rest. Right. Yeah. And so for a long time, I didn't know what it was to get rest. Physically, I could sit down, but mentally, my mind was just, that's a learned behavior. Yeah. And so one of the things is, is I, and I love, you know, with my kids, they learn self-care. My daughter goes, you know, and get things done for herself. My son, you know, he does his skating. That's his coping mechanism. My children have learned effective coping mechanisms so that they don't repeat the things that I've had to repeat. Now, granted, they're going to have their own things. And I've told them, I want you all to get you a good counselor. Their thing is, no, we have you. No, 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 no. Because people have to understand when you counsel others, that's a weight. And so my Ooh. prayer is every day. I pray for God to, you know, remove any negative spirits or block any negative spirits that try to attach. I pray that I bring no harm, hurt or danger to any patient. No patient brings any harm, hurt or danger to me. And then I'm able to do the will. And so a lot of times when we go into certain environments, um, spiritually exposed mm. and not covered, we have to look at why we have increase of suicide rates among our first responders, among our psychiatrists, among, you know, healthcare workers and just people in general. You cannot feel that wearing others uh, uh, issues, problems or concerns eventually won't continue to compress you. And then people can leave home happy and come back home drained. Yes. The draining gets to a point where you run on fumes. And when you run on fumes, eventually something's going to give out. So I have learned that um, the encouraging words I give to other people, I pour back into myself. Mm -hmm. If I need five or 10 minutes, okay, give me five or 10 minutes, please. All right. If you're coming to me with something, are you a problem or a solution? Mm -hmm. If you're a problem, I need you to have a solution. If you had a solution, well done. But people want, um, they want praises. They want to run to you with this, 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 this. And, and some stuff is, some stuff is foolishness, just yeah. foolishness. Yeah, and so God has allowed me to mind my tongue um, and my facial expressions because my eyes can speak volumes. And it is so amazing. It's funny. 
a good friend of mine, best friend of mine, we went to high school together. Her grandmother passed last year. And we really hadn't, you know, like talk, talk in years. But when we do talk, no time is missed. And so we were just talking when I went to the um, the viewing. And what she said was, Monica's not mean. She's just stern. <laughs> now, can you imagine for somebody that knew me the bulk of my, you know, teenager years, early adulthood to say stern? That's a good characteristic, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so, again, you never know what somebody thinks of you, but we can't live our life um, wanting people to approve us, mm -hmm. <laughs> to validate us. Right. Because who and what they think you're to be, that may not be who and what God has ordained you to be. And so when you're out of that wheel, stuff ain't going to fit right. It doesn't feel right mm -hmm. because you're constantly trying to be something that you're not. Yeah. And so... Teenagers, oh my gosh, I love being able to, you know, treat <laughs> teenagers because I tell them at the end of the day, your motto has to be my life, my choice. I choose to live unapologetically. Mm -hmm. That will reign with anybody because you're taking ownership. Mm -hmm. And so, again, we've learned, I think, a lot of negative habits, but I think we've learned how to break a lot of habits that were negative. But it begins with us. And then that guilt that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's the guilt because the residue that's still there needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. But again, out of sight, out of mind, we will compress. We will put it to the back of our mind. But then mm -hmm. those things come out in inopportune times. And when they come out in inopportune times, no matter whoever's there with you, that's who's going right. to get it. That's right. And then you allow that person to carry that. And then they're left with, okay, well, I don't know what just happened. And it's not fair to that person or persons, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just different stages in life that we go through. We live and we learn. Mm -hmm. um, one of the beautiful things that I love about you is that when you were speaking about me, you said Monica and then Dr. Johnson. This is the thing. People have to know it's not one and the same. Mm-hmm. For a very long time, I said nursing was um, who I am. Good. That's good. I have learned that what I do as a profession is what I do. It's not who I am. It's not who and you so are. I, it, it took me some time to learn that trying to make my career who and what I am made me continue to feel like certain things was never enough. Hmm. That's that's, good. that's, that's good. very dangerous because you get to a point where nothing feels like it fits. Mm -hmm. Nothing feels as if it's authentic. And I heard you say that earlier. Mm -hmm. Nothing feels as if um, you're, in, you're going in the right direction. And nothing feels like there's an end to what you're trying to reach. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, again, growth. I'm 45 years old. And I tell people what I know now, if I could have knew an inch of it <laughs> when I was younger, you know, where would I be? But God knew best. And so even like, you know, past relationships, things, this, that, and the other, I thank God because there's some bullets I dodged. I think a lot of us could say that. That's for sure. You know, listen, <laughs> listen. I was on somebody. That is for sure. Page. Thank God for the dodge bullets, Lord. Listen, I was on somebody's Facebook page, and uh, I was I saw an old boyfriend. When I tell you, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> I thank you because of the fact that sometimes I'm gonna just say this: sometimes we're foolish. I mean, you know, I mean, sometimes mm -hmm. we're so blinded by dumbness that, and that's mm -hmm. the only way I can explain it. Or blinded it's, by wisdom. We don't blind, we're blinded from wisdom. It that's is really it ridiculous. Is. And I said, I thank God that I knew what wasn't right to know what was right with mm -hmm. my husband. And God know who to get it. And I, listen, for him to put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I could be something by myself, but I'm going to tell you, as a strong black woman, let me tell you something. <laughs> Anybody that's watching, if you're a strong woman, please know this. Strongness 
um, comes in different fashions. And it doesn't mean that you are um, barbaric. It doesn't mean that you are, you know, so boisterous. Doesn't mean you make all the money. It doesn't mean you have control. It doesn't mean any of that. Yes. Being a strong woman means you know your place. Mm, that's good. Because of the fact that when my husband met me, I let me tell you what I told my husband. I'm gonna tell you, I was 20 and he was 25. My cutoff was um two years. So I tried to find everything in the book wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, now he met, he okay, he didn't have any kids. Um, you know, he had his own place, had his own car. He was working jobs, you know, nice looking guy. His credit wasn't good. I said, well, I can work with that. I can fix that. But the enemy was so in my ear to find something. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I didn't pay attention to what mm -hmm. the enemy was saying. And I hearkened to what God said, because I really feel like when he put us together, it was the right together. Mm. Um, you know, never had to worry about uh infidelity, being insecure, um, you know, putting hands on people. He probably wanted to put hands on because of my mouth sometime. But I can honestly say that he has really been that strong tower. Mm. Um, being strong, you know, knowing when to pray for me or when to touch mm. my shoulder, or knowing when to caress me. Or knowing, you know, just to get, give me a, a text message of, you know, hey, beautiful, how you doing? Or stop my, my job and bring me something to eat. Or Aww. text me and say, take a break and eat. When somebody is so in tune with you, mm. that is, to me, that is more sexy than a man with a six pack. I'm sorry. It is. It is. It is. So we're emotional. We're emotional a, creatures. Yes. It is yes. a emotional attachment where he knows me you know what i mean yeah and so you never know what you're missing or what you don't have until you really get it mm -hmm. people can tell you this that and the other and want what you have but listen 25 years being together it hasn't been all great but mm -hmm. it's been more great than not great you know what i mean wow and so it is just one of those things that me as a whole as a person it's just not me as a whole just by myself you know, okay. my community makes me up, my, you know, uh, my church family, my home family, friends, um, clients over the years. I've had the opportunity to treat and talk to some of them have even come, you know, become family. I had one text me today. Hey, big sis, can you call me? I'm like, when well, I'm at work right now and I ain't got time to call, but I'm gonna try to get to it. But it's just that. And I'm gonna tell you this. I had a young, uh, I had a previous supervisor reach out to me the other day. And it, let me tell you, 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 you have to be in tune with God. Mm -hmm. She called me the other day and she said, hey, um, I'm getting ready to do this symposium about da, 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 da. Let me know if you know someone that has witnessed suicide or have a family mm -hmm. member suicide. Da, 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 da. And immediately a young lady came to my mind that I used to um, treat. Mm -hmm. And um, I had her sister number in my phone. So I called the number and I said, hey, da, 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 this is, you know, Dr. Johnson, da, 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 da. Um, let me know if you can give me your sister number or give her mine because I want to ask her something. So I wound up getting the number and believe it or not, her number was in my phone already, but I just didn't wow. find it. So I called her and let me tell you, immediately when she heard my voice, she began to cry. She saw my number come up. And I'm assuming she had my number locked in her phone because she just immediately knew. And I said, hey, sugar, I say, what's going on with you? And she just she said, you know what? God is so awesome because right now I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I'm frustrated. She just went on and on and on. I said, well, listen, you know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, call me, whether it's personal, mm -hmm. you know, call or yeah. come in. And um, I said, you know, I have somebody that would want you to speak. Would you be willing to? And she said, yes. Right then, that let me know that her part, that part of her life that she was dealing with, um, dealing with her, um, her, 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 her child, because I don't want to specify yes. her child that had, you know, she was ready to help other people. And I had already seen years ago that she would be on a platform being able to speak to other people about her process going through that. And I think it's powerful when we have been able to walk in the call that God has called us to 
can help someone, whether it's therapeutic or monetary or whatever it is, and see them blossom into this person that can now pay it forward. Wow. So, mm -hmm. wow. so what's been instilled in her, she can now instill in other people. I tell people all the time, you can't tell me how to make it through if you mm -hmm. haven't been through what I've been through. That's fact. I tell people all the time, I would never say I know how you feel, but let me try to witness to you a little bit. Let me try to give you this. And I don't tell you what I think. I tell you what I know. Mm -hmm. Because me telling you what I think, that's my own personal. Telling you what I know, that's research, that's wisdom, knowledge, after asking for understanding, and then being able to lead and guide you. And in some cases, because I always ask, you know, when you do a psyche vow, one of the questions that I ask is, what's your religion? That gives me the doorway open. Now, they say Christian, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopal. okay, we going. And then if I get to a point and I'm led, I'll ask them, is it okay if I pray with you? If they say yes, I do. If they say no, I'm okay. Because at least I put in that seat. But see, I don't need you to tell me okay to pray because I can pray with my eyes open. That's right. You know what I mean? And so we're just in a time where people are dealing with so many things. And, you know, even though I know this session was, you know, for me to talk about me, I can't talk about me without talking about those that um, allow me to impart into their lives. Because, you know, in, in, in big ways, it helps me too. Because if I was able to sum up everything that I've been able to do in my life to this point, um, I could only say that I'm blessed. Because um, when I think about my senior year in high school, you know how they tell you to write in your book what you want to be, this, that, and the other. What you want to be, yeah, yeah. Nursing. Nursing was what I put. I was supposed to go into the military. I wanted to go into the Navy. and But the Navy wouldn't guarantee me nursing. And my thought was, oh, they'll have me in the kitchen somewhere. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't go in the military. And I tell people this. I started um, my education in medical in 1994 and my last degree was obtained August of 2018. That's a long time. Yes. I crawled. A long time. I crawled and I climbed the ladder. That's like 14 that years. Ladder, listen, how, how, what'd you say? That's like 14 years. Oh no, that's more than that. You said 2004? 1994. Oh, 1990. Ooh. 1994 wow. to 2018. Wow. That's like 24 no. years. Yeah, 24 yeah. years. Yeah. Wow. In those 24 years, I prayed for wisdom, knowledge, wow. and understanding. And so during those times, I took breaks, of course. Um, and then there were times, you know, working and just school. And that's why for my kids. I didn't want them to have to endure the way I had to endure. Now, you know, nothing against my parents or anything, but, you know, age of 19, I moved out. I had my own apartment. Um, and it's, you know, when you think about what you used to do, I don't think I could do it now with nobody but God. But I used to work um, in a nursing home from 11 at night to about 6.30 in the morning, because then I would go and work at St. Vincent's from 7 in the morning to three in the afternoon. Ooh, and then I would have class from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. when I was going for ultrasonography. Wow. This, I was 19 years old at that time. And I did that for a year. Um, when I tell you nobody but God, nobody but God. So we have to be able to, and I, you know, I hear some people say, well, my kids need to get it the hard way because I had to, and then they'll be able to appreciate it. You know, to each his own. But I'm a firm believer that let me give them the best foundation possible. What they choose and how they choose to do with that after the fact, then it becomes on them. But at least I did the very best that I could do with what I had. Um, even when I daughter her student loans, you know, we took a bulk of her student loans. We didn't want her to have to have that debt. And wow. see how God worked that out where our son had no debt. And wow. I tell people, tithe and offering. Oh, this household, we, we are givers. And so a couple of weeks ago, I promise you, I was tired and I was like, man, I'm going to get to church. Ooh. 
Got there late, but I got there. Made sure, paid a tithing offering. That next week, um, my daughter had been applying for positions, wasn't getting any callbacks, da 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 da. They didn't want to pay her what she was making, da 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 da. She got a call for a position, got off of the position, no change in her pay. My son um, got his information for when he was supposed to do his appointments for firefighter. I got my promotion. I got an increase in January and then another increase this month. Congratulations. And then becoming a chief clinical officer of where I work, first African-American, first position that that company has had to be third in charge. And let me tell you how good God is. <laughs> last year, let me tell you, last year, uh, it was a period of time where I was working three jobs. I said, okay, I'm tired. So I said, God, have your will, have your way. You know, make a way out of no way. Da, 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 da. And a lot of times the way I work, it's because my mind is always going. So I might as well be on somebody's job. That's 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 my thought process. And so um, last year I was working um, a telehealth position at home. So again, I work from five in the morning to 10 in the morning on one job. Come home and work um, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. Wow. Money was great. Money was very great. It was but I was physically and mentally and emotionally tired. Mm, right. I'm sure. <laughs> with, you know, the, the, the day job, I was so upset with them because my thing is this, if you promise something or say something, I'm taking you for your word. But then when certain things don't pan out, we do become um, complacent. Mm -hmm. And instead of speaking up, we just do crazy stuff. So I took all my pictures and paintings off the wall, <laughs> took them home, Asked one of the workers to find me another office. I, I moved from a huge office to like this box. My patients would come in and say, Dr. Johnson, I don't really like this office. This ain't you at all. I say, listen, all we need is me, you, this computer, and this desk. We fine. Come on, let's get this visit done. <laughs> I did that for maybe six months or so. But then, you know, when individuals can recognize what you bring, and it wasn't I was being disgruntled, you know, none of that stuff. But again, I didn't need the big office. I didn't. My primary goal and job was to help those that I was there to serve. Wow. And so now being in the position I am, you know, you have to be a people person. Yes. And yes. Um, when you draw people, draw people for the right reason. Mm -hmm. um, I am no nonsense, but I will love on you and chastise at the same time. You'll never know which one is which. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. That that's a good thing. That's because you're tied to your purpose. When you when what you do is I, you you said it. And that was the most important thing you said. You what who you are and what you do are two different things. Yeah. And when you realize who you are, it when it comes to doing what you do, mm -hmm. your natural gift kicks in, and it's not work to you. So yeah. it's not like with somebody else that comes in and has just, skill, you know, me and one of my partner, we've been talking a lot versus skill versus uh, your gift mm -hmm. or operating in your skill versus operating in your gift. Mm -hmm. The thing about skill, skill, you know, if you're just only operating by skill, eventually people burn out, they get tired, yeah. they don't want to continue to do it or they do it with the wrong mindset. That's why you have people that are in your field that are some, not all, that are, that are mm -hmm. burnt out, they're tired yeah. because it's not they don't have, they haven't tapped into their gifts. So mm -hmm. most of the time they're doing it, it's out of perfunctory. Mm -hmm. So they're exhausted. They're there okay. because their skill can only take you so far. Exactly. Once you start to operate in the, once you start to identify the gifts that God placed in you, which like he said in a word, those gifts are there so that he can be glorified. Exactly. You've, you've tapped into that. So now you can work with these people, no matter what condition that they're in, no mm -hmm. matter what condition you're in, because you understand that everything you do is to bring God glory. So it's not work to you. Exactly. And you know, it's, it's something where mm -hmm. when I let go of the other job, and this is the thing, I had four job offers um, leading out of last year, coming into this year four. Mm-hmm. And these were great jobs. And so I was like, okay, God, if it's meant for me to stay where I am, I need you to do what only you can do. And he did that. And, you know, at this place, because um, I love to educate, I have doctoral candidate pharmacy students um, from 
a university that comes and sit up under me. I'm able to teach them. They're able to learn. Um, we have another university of nursing students that I'm, you know, putting that back into rotation that are starting to fall. Um, it's just so many things he's allowing me to do in that place where I feel like it's nobody but him. And when I let go of that second job this time, I was excited about going to work because I didn't dread having mm -hmm. to go to one, be burnt out, go do the other. Because I tell anybody, if you do psychiatric care five days straight, all day with no breaks, and wow. you don't know how to pace yourself, you're going to be one of those patients soon. I believe it. And so I last year, all my years of living, I've never gone to a counselor or therapist because for the most part, sitting um, uh, sitting under teaching my bishop and first lady, um, we've been there 22 years now. Shout out to Bishop Lewis and Bernadette Williams. <laughs> I, you know, my husband and I, you know, and our kids, we, 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 we've never had to go in. And listen, I don't knock anybody that has to, but I, you know, for us, I get it from the pulpit. I, I get it from sitting in the pew and listening and watching and that type of thing. And so it just really comes a point in time where we have to have that firm understanding of who we are. Mm -hmm. When we do not, I think it causes um, hesitation, reservations, and then it winds up, you wind up feeling um, disappointed about things that's unnecessarily causing you to be disappointed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And so again, to be excited to go to work, to be excited to help someone, to be excited to do something different, just to be excited to be a part of what God would have you to do. And we go through things in our life. Yeah. Last year, um, my husband tested positive for COVID last January. And um, when he came home, I knew something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I, did, I gave him a test at home. It was positive. I said, okay, well, you need to go and get a confirmatory for your job the next day, da, 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 da. When I tell you, I told his mama, come get your son. <laughs> Listen, because at the time I was working three jobs, which two of them wow. I was working from home. The wow. third one, which is the one I'm at now, allowed me to, to work from home during that time. I was mentally, physically and emotionally tired oh because I would get up every day, make sure everybody had breakfast. I would bring him out of that room. We all had masks on. I'd take yeah. him outside. You're Lysoling, spraying, wiping. You're doing all those things. Wow. And so after he was getting better, then I got sick. Now, yeah. mind you, I hadn't already called my friend. I said, listen, I need you to call this in, this in, this in. So everybody was on meds in the house. <laughs> so I promise you, I did two tests here and two tests here. These two were positive. These two were negative. So I told my daughter, I said, Maya, come and do another test on me. Same thing. One negative, one positive. I said, it's a darnest thing. So again, I called my friend. I said, listen, I need you to prescribe this, this, and this. And what was so, I think the worst part of that whole situation was I am a type of person, I've got to be really down to ask you to help me. Because I feel like if I got to tell you what I need, I ain't finna waste no breath to tell you because you should already know. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. My symptoms were only six days. Six days. But I'm a long hauler. So every now and again, I get the shortness of breath. I get the fogginess of, you know, memory. Um, I get the fatigue. Um, I had the chronic cough for a long time. And so that's when the PVCs, the premature ventricular contractions come up that I was having. And they were coming so often. And, you know, years pass. If you have issues with anemia and that type of thing, that can also cause, you know, you to have some PVCs or your heartbeat, you know, to skip. The average woman would be like, oh, okay, that's nothing. Mm. Those PVCs were coming so strong. And it, it it actually scared me a little bit. And I went to sleep that night. Wow. Went to sleep that night. Got up the next morning. And I kind of told my husband about it. My daughter. Now, my daughter is a beast as a nurse. She's oh, no, no, no. We, going wow. to we are going to the emergency room. Now, me, I was like, you know what? I really don't feel like going to this ER because there's a lot of people there with COVID. They're going to make you wait. Da, 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 da. I waited in that ED for over an hour with complaints of chest pain and shortness of breath. Really? They let you wait that long? Wow. Yes, ma'am. Because it was, they were booked. They had people oh, yeah. in the hallways. So oh, wow. when I got back there, they did what they did. They did labs. And the guy was like, well, I kind of want to keep it long. I said, no, sir. Go ahead and discharge me home. 
and I will follow up with my provider when I get out of here, right? Get out of there. It took three weeks for the heart specialist appointment, two weeks for the primary care provider. Now, even to this day, I thank God for giving me the understanding and the wisdom to be able to pour into myself. Yeah. I was able to write my first book. I've always wanted to do it. So my birthday was last May and I was turning 45. Originally, I wanted to do 45 quotes to encourage people. Mm. God downloaded 111 quotes. And wow. now I even have enough for probably two or three more books. I'm kind of, you know, we'd we be hesitant about doing stuff, but mm. I'm going to get back on it. But during my time of getting up and taking care of my husband for nine days, which is birthing out. God would allow me to get up every day excited and he would just drop these things, these nuggets, just drop them. And I would write them. I would type them. I would write. I would type. I would write. And when I tell you that got me through a tough time, Mm. anyone that has ever had to take a loved one, you're sick yourself and still needing to work. That is a lot on anybody. That's a lot emotionally, physically. Just me just thinking about it, like, dang, you had to be incredibly strong. Listen, and grace, <laughs> grace. Listen, it was, and I'm gonna tell you, all of my years of living, I've never gone to a therapist until last year. Pastor um Azalea Williams. Um, I think her last name is Williams. I think so, Azalea. Um, we went to high school together. No, we went to middle school together. Mm -hmm. And God just dropped her in my spirit just to go and sit and talk with her. When I tell you the best thing that she did was is she listened. Mm -hmm. And what she kept speaking was grace. And my birth month is five. And that just resonated with me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she asked me, she says, who is your fave five? I said, what? She says, who is your, you know, five people that you can. And I really had to think about that thing. Wow. I don't know fave five. My husband, right? I mean, we all have a best friend or a friend and our kids, but honestly, I could not list a, a five five people that I would go to on a regular basis. I just isn't that something? Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, even now, what God is showing me, even by saying that is, is that sometimes we have become that go-to person for everybody else that we limit who we're able to go to. Mm-hmm. That's true. And that's a powerful thing because even in this season that we're in, we're dealing with so many different things. I can honestly say that I am in a point in my life where everything is not such an urgency to me anymore. It's just not. Um, I am learning to take care of me. You know, I got braces like two years ago and finally got them off. I remember I seen them on Facebook. (laughs) I was like, Father God, we I thought Dr. Orsborn was tired of me because I told I told Dr. Orsborn his his name is Orsborn. And so to me, my mouth had to be a certain way to say it. I said, I said, Orsborn just don't sound right. I said, Osborne do. He was like, How you gonna tell me how to say my name? I said, But, you know, I'm starting to do things to take care of me, things that I may want to get done. Mm -hmm. I've poured, you know, financially into people, mentally, physically, all those things. And so now I'm at a place where I don't feel guilty for, you know, pouring into me. Um, But sometimes it takes us a little longer. And I tell people, strong people need more prayer. Mm, Strong people need more encouraging. That's fact. Strong people need a better support system because Mm -hmm. we do all those things for everybody else and we are depleted. We're depleted. And instead of us going to a gas station or a rest stop, gas station to get refueled, a rest stop to rest, we keep going. We bypass Mm -hmm. it. And in Mm -hmm. some cases, we bypass it and it it, it, um, becomes too late. Individuals have strokes too soon. Yes. Attacks too soon. Um, and, and, and some make it back and some don't. But when do we get to a point and say, you know what? I love you, but I love me more. Yes. Yes. Balance is so, so key to everything, because especially mm-hmm. when you become a 
a caregiver, whether it's a caregiver in your home or caregiver at work or caregiver, you get so used to look, especially women, especially us as women, mm -hmm. because we're looked, it's looked at the more you can bear, the stronger you are. And we like as women feeling mm -hmm. like we can bear all things. We yeah. love being able to and not realizing that sometimes it's OK mm -hmm. to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that in my own life is to be okay with not having. And most of my mindset was because of the things that I've had to endure. So mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't give myself the opportunity to be let down or to let things go down because I knew that if I took that one breather, it could affect mm -hmm. my children. So yeah. to me, being strong, bearing all things was a life or it was a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that, you know, as a doctor, when you begin to live in that survival mode all the time, mm -hmm. your adrenaline is always going. Your mind is always going. You don't rest mm -hmm. until your body completely shuts down, which is what exactly. happened to me. I had COVID mm -hmm. last year in June, July. I had COVID last year mm -hmm. and didn't even realize it. Just going, 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 going. And just as long as I was feeling good up here, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, my body will come, you know, whatever, where the mind goes, the body's going to follow. So right. I, I had to get, I got to a point where my body completely shut down. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do anything. And I realized at that moment, like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. be you can be strong here, but you have to be you have to be purposeful. You have to be intentional yeah. when it comes to taking care of your mental health. You have mm -hmm. to be intentional because you'll your mind will play tricks on you and your mind will make you feel like you fine, girl. Yeah. Just keep yeah. going. That's just that you just strong and mm -hmm. not realizing that when you when your body gives out, then who's going to take care of? who's going to take care of you then when your body goes out, if you're the only, only caregiver. Exactly. And so I had to, um, in that time frame, though I recovered, cause it's funny. Cause God was always, it's always ordering my steps. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I just, man, I just seen him order my steps in so many ways. And when I laid down, I knew that my body needed to rest. So I mm -hmm. recovered within about a week. I had to go to the hospital because I mm -hmm. did have some pain in my body. Right. Um, but what I realized is that when I recover, I recovered within about five days, but the fatigue lasts me like almost a month, Yeah, a long, almost a month to get rid of the fatigue. But I had already been doing things before then. So I believe that God was preparing my body before that happened so that mm -hmm. it wouldn't be as bad. Mm -hmm. But even now, even then I realized when I start going, I'm like, okay, Nadir, it's time to, sh to shut down mm -hmm. because I'm a cre when you're a creator, you know, yeah. And you're and you're in, in my mind, you know, most of it is just I just like being productive work to mm -hmm. me, is not work, especially when it's something that you love to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You still in doing what you love to do. You still have yeah. to take times. I feel awkward. I'm so used to running on three, four hours of sleep. If I get five Listen, hours, I felt like I done slept all night. <laughs> now that I work, um, you know, the one job, you know, I, I'm there Monday through Friday. But, um, you know, I may do eight, nine, 10 hours, just because I'm trying to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when I tell you it's a different type of tired, mm -hmm. it's not a bad tired. You know, again, mm -hmm. once you're doing mental health and substance abuse, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, your mind like, Ooh, all right. Yes. Yes. But I can honestly say when I finally let go of the other job, Mm. I was literally working two full-time jobs mm. in, in five days. Wow. And I said, okay, God, I went into the new year. God have your way. Um, you know, paid off some stuff, put some money up. Mm -hmm. um, because I've learned the more you make, the more you spend. That's for sure. Now we're good stewards, you know, when we're sewing, we're tithing, we're giving, we're helping other people. But I was like, when I looked at what I'm finna have to get ready to pay on my taxes, uh, you know, and, and didn't work that many. I worked mainly one job, mainly the whole year, except for maybe from January to February, it was three. And then from February to September, it was the one. And then September to, to December, it was the two full time. Now, if I made that, I say, God, I'm depending on you to do more than that. Mm 
<laughs> for this, wow. this, this, this one. Wow. And so it is just what I'm, you know, the other thing I'm learning this season is that a lot of things I'm speaking is coming mm-hmm. to pass. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to really work on what I say, what I mm-hmm. speak, allow it to have purpose, um, allow it to be driven and yeah. to allow it to be God, you know, ordained. Because a lot of things we want, it's not time for it. I, I honestly don't yes. think what he has blessed me with now, I would have been able to handle in my earlier years. Um, just because of the fact that what I currently juggle, um, I juggle what four or five people would have to do now. Wow. I do. But wow. it, it, but it, 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 it comes easily now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, being in the position that I am, um, also being a provider, um, filling the role of another position, um, also being over the students, um, you know, it can be a lot, but it's just, it's just so, it's surreal where I'm not overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's, um, because, that's because your gifts have allowed you to flow in the areas mm-hmm. of your skill set without mm-hmm. it being overwhelming because you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, I t- for anybody, it takes time to get there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't just wake up one day and say, "Woo, all right, I'm there." Yes. No, it, it it took time, and it, it's so ironic. My um, my supervisor, my CEO, he came in and talked to me the other day. He was sitting in my office, and he was like, "Doc, how many times <laughs> you, you know you didn't move here?" I remember <laughs> coming into one office, then they moved me to another office, then to a bigger office. Then I moved myself to a small office. Then they moved me to another office. And now they just moved me to another office. That's six. Wow. Mercy. But I'm going to tell you, one of the windows, I have three windows. (laughs) Two of the windows on the side has those beautiful um, fuchsia pink flowers, right? Mm -hmm. The other window has the cemetery that's across the street. Mm. And you can look to the right. Well, yeah, see the flowers and you can say you're blooming, you're blossoming, mm-hmm. you know, this, that, and the other. The other side, you can see where some people may see that it's being death. I don't. What I see it as, that's some people that have transitioned on. And depending on the decisions and choices they've made in their life, if they've accepted Christ, then heaven is their home. Mm-hmm. Now, I said that to say this. Some people could have said, oh, I wouldn't want no office with a window with a cemetery. It goes to show how we choose to see things in our life. Always about perspective. Always. And the thing is, is that the way I may see it, as opposed to the way somebody else may see it, may be totally different. But the differences doesn't always mean it's right or wrong. It's how I perceive it. So how I perceive it pushes me because, you know, I pray the Lord keep me in my right mind, good health and strength all the days of my life. Absolutely. And eventually, God, you know, whatever he has, it's going to come to pass. That's but right. we can allow fear, which I call false evidence that appears real, to get us in a place where it prevents us from being productive. And it allows us to be stagnant because of fear. Now, some mm-hmm. fear is good, but then too much of anything isn't good. Right. And so I agree. even when we was talking about, you know, COVID and this, that, and the other, a lot of people still, there's a lot of people that still have not contracted COVID. There mm-hmm. are some people that, that has contracted COVID and didn't know it. And then unfortunately, there's some people that contracted COVID that are no longer here. Yes. Year before last, I had a, um, a good family member. He played the saxophone, all those good things, lived in Atlanta. Um, he passed away that Sunday. Um, one of my cousins called me, I, it might've been that Tuesday. And she was like, Monica, my sister can't pass, you know, da, 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 what can we do? Yeah. And, you know, we talked and then my cousin passed away that Thursday and they had a 17 year old son. Now that's without his parents. And wow. so I think now he should be about 19, preferably in college, but we just never know who would have ever thought. That's true. A couple of years ago. And so what I tell people is. For the most part, do your wellness. Things in life only becomes an illness when we don't identify what we need to identify. When you've right. identified a problem, now yeah. we can make it a wellness because now we're educating ourselves about it. And that's mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, any of that. Yeah. And so 
if we're overweight, okay, let's address that. Yeah. If we have okay. hypertension, let's address that. If we have diabetes, let's address that. Hyperlipidemia, let's let's address that. And then when we don't address those things, it causes other problems. And it's not age biased. We have children with hypertension, children That's with true. diabetes, That's children true. that are having CVAs and heart attacks and this type of thing. Oh and God. so what we're seeing more from COVID though, is more depression, more anxiety, yeah. more PTSD, more suicidal yeah. ideations, more suicide attempts. And so it, wow. we, we, you know, from my perspective, we have a lot to do, um, but so do parents and guardians. Because when we allow kids to watch these TVs like now with this war and things that are going on, you know, that gets into our floodgates mm -hmm. and that causes um, more fear. That causes anxiety where, you know, and people be like, I'm not depressed. And then I do their assessment. If your appetite is up and down, your mood is up and down and your sleep is up and down, we're dealing with depression. Yes, it absolutely. It's kind of depressive disorder when it's six months or longer. But it doesn't have to get to that point if we can address those things early. And a lot of times, listen, when you go to the doctor for the first time, medication doesn't always have to be the first thing. Um, therapy is beneficial if mm -hmm. you're receiving. Now, as far as health wise, I, you know, I always tell my patients, if you're dealing with hypertension, diabetes or hyperlipidemia, I give you 90 days to change your lifestyle. That means eating better, exercising better, getting sleep, Absolutely. moving stressors. When you do that and come back in 90 days, if we're good, we're good. If we're not, now we need to talk about doing something else because this ain't working. And it's the same thing with mental health, mental awareness. We used to say 21 days of doing anything becomes a cycle or a habit. Anything you do consistently becomes mm -hmm. a habit. No matter, you know, it doesn't matter how long you do it. That's a good point. But, you know... What, what are we willing to do to make changes? And like I tell them, I don't say diets because I can do a diet for two days and that's it. A lifestyle change. Lifestyle if you're change. not willing to change your lifestyle, your style of living will change itself. That's true. I've had to do that myself. I've had to make some lifestyle changes um, to where my diet, I eat more, I say 70 to 80 percent more vegan than I did. Um, Ooh, I, ain't there now. I, ain't, I ain't there yet. And <laughs> and and I can say I give credit to definitely Charmaine Harrison, uh, uh, herbal naturopath. She's been really instrumental in 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 teaching and educating. You talked a lot about educating, educating yeah. about not really having to give up the things that you like, but but mm -hmm. switching it out. If you have moderation. Person, you know, if you like hamburgers where well, you can use, you know, instead of using certain things, you know, you can use quinoa patties. So I've mm -hmm. been enjoying quinoa patties. I still like chicken every once in a while. I still eat my chicken now, but <laughs> I don't eat it as much as yeah. I used to because I was a die I was a diehard chicken fan. So I noticed that my skin looks better. I noticed mm -hmm. I feel better. I noticed that, you know, I don't have the same issues that I had before because I can, you know, I'll eat some some meat sometimes, but I've been changing a lot of my eat over to, to oyster mushrooms. Let me I ask you this. Oyster mushrooms. Let me ask you this. What part of the chicken did you prefer? Oh, I like the wings. And let me tell you this right here. So one of the things you said was that your skin got better, right? Mm hmm. OK. When we look at chickens, chickens and hens are bigger than they've ever been before. Right. Mm hmm. What do you think they inject hormones? In chicken. In the wings and in the breast. Really? I thought yes. it would have been the wings and the legs. Really? Wings and the breast. White meat. Wow. So a lot of times when we look at, and I tell people too, if That's you look at the wow. ground beef or pork chops or roast, when you are seasoning them and you kind of pull them apart a little bit, you'll see like a white kind of substance that looks yeah. like plastic, something to, you know, kind of keep mm -hmm. it together. You know, that stuff has to break down in your body. Yeah. And so when you're having issues with bowel movements and this type of thing, mm -hmm. our bodies are made of more than 70% of water. When we don't get yeah. it in, it takes it from our hair, our skin, our nails, and we feel mm -hmm. like this. If you notice after eating something sweet or fried, you feel heavy, tired, and drained. Well, what's happening is, is that your body um, becomes a filter of certain things. And when it doesn't filter through the way that it should, that's going to cause that increase of heaviness and type of thing. Mm -hmm. Also, when you have increased times of feeling depressed, 
you crave more sugar. That's true. And so that's what people be like, I don't know why I'm gaining all this weight because of what you're craving, because yeah. of what you're dealing with, what you're going through that you don't want to address. So right. all of it kind of ties in, but then it gets to the point where we just do what's comfortable. We do what's convenient. We don't want to put in the work. We don't want to put in the work. I've had to, my thing was carbohydrates. Oh my yes. gosh. I'm a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've changed my rice to quinoa rice. So okay. now I eat a lot. You know, I do everything with quinoa. When I go to the grocery store, I'm buying quinoa. Mm -hmm. Like my kids love quinoa patties. Like we did mm -hmm. a video where we were doing quinoa patties. So I've had to, um, and then I've had to recently switch away from just even the frozen healthy dust because the sodium is yeah. so high. So I have to, to preserve it. Yeah. Anything in a can, it. anything, well, mostly things that are frozen, they have to preserve it. So preserving right. it increased sodium. And I tell patients, like, if you have diabetes and hypertension, that type of thing, never go to the store hungry. Well, even if you don't have those things, don't go That's to the store hungry because you pick up everything. <laughs> but we have to learn how to look at the back of the um, ingredients mm -hmm. and also look at the portion sizes and look at what's in it. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to lose weight, you should really stay under 50 carbs a day. Yeah. And the thing that is killing us is the five whites, white rice, white salt, white yeah. sugar, white flour, and white bread. And when white we bread. consume those things on an everyday basis, first of all, to get it white, it goes through a process to get it white. Mm -hmm. So when we're consuming those things, it just makes our system react in a way where we have fat deposits that worsens. And people be like, well, I don't eat that much. Well, when you don't eat that much, you starve yourself and your body goes into a starvation mode. Mm -hmm. Then fat feeds off of fat. That's why mm -hmm. you'll see some people lose weight and they don't look healthy at all because they're not doing it the right way. Yeah. When you burn more fat, you're supposed to eat more, but it should be proportionalized. Yeah. Six small meals a day. And it's easier said than done because a lot of us are busy. We are on the go a lot. But we have to get to the point where we slow down to be yeah. able to make sense out of what this thing called living is. Mm -hmm. And we live life, you know, to enjoy it, not to get to a point where we can't. And I tell people, if you don't take care of your body now, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, as you get older, your body won't take care of you. So either you're going to mm -hmm. be on the front end with what you pay. Um, as far as meal planning, exercising, you know, that type of thing, or you're going to pay the let the latter end where you're going to the hospital and these mm -hmm. doctor's offices, you got these co-pays and mm -hmm. these large out-of-pocket pays because the insurance mm -hmm. told you that you ain't met your quota and this yeah. and the other. So what you want, whichever way. Yeah. I've it's had to good. eliminate, I've had to eliminate bread. I've eliminated, um, and my, I've noticed a, a huge increase in, in the way I feel, the way I look, yeah. because I've had to eliminate. So now what I do is I don't even do the sugar substitutes. Even when I drink my tea, I don't have any sugar. Just I'll have organic honey or raw honey. Mm -hmm. And um, and so even when I'm if I desired like something and I even I love like whipped cream, like in my coffee and stuff like now I use coconut. Um, There's this uh, it's like a coconut type of uh, whipped cream made out of coconut. Mm -hmm. I've eliminated milk from my diet. So if I have to have cereal, you know, I'll have oat milk, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's some things that I've had to eliminate and I don't suffer. Like I eat a lot of peppers. My diet consists of, you know, peppers and and, and vegetables. Like people look at me and they probably be like, that looks just, how are you full? I'll cut mm -hmm. up green, yellow, orange and, and red peppers, cut it up onions and 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 i'll you know put it in some uh avocado oil and i'll stir fry it and add if i feel like i want to have meat i'll add oyster mushrooms i'll cut up the oyster mm -hmm. mushrooms or i'll add beans to it you know anything mm -hmm. and to me i feel better i don't feel sluggish mm -hmm. i don't feel tired um and i take naps in the daytime i you know mm -hmm. because i work from home i realize how important naps are because mm -hmm. if you don't if you do all the other stuff and you don't yeah. rest yeah. And you don't sleep. I mean, you have to listen to your body. And so if you don't listen mm -hmm. to your body, then you might be doing all the eating all the right stuff. But it everything has to work in alignment. Mm -hmm. You have to work mm -hmm. in alignment and well, be able to, to do it. And people have to know, like when you're not sleeping well, that makes you gain weight. Yeah. Um, and if you have prolonged times of not having appropriate sleep, you're irritable, you're annoyed easily, you know, you're disgruntled. Mm -hmm. Um, so all those things play a part. And a lot of people have to know there's a such thing as 
<laughs> you know, your hygiene for sleep. Sleep mm -hmm. hygiene is very important. Some yeah. people will do a strenuous exercise before they go to bed. That's the wrong thing to do because yeah. it doesn't yeah. help you to be able to get good sleep. Yeah. And so it's sometimes just simple things that we don't think about. And then there's sometimes people will sleep two or three hours and they feel like they're good. That's only going to be for a short period of time. That used to be me a long time ago, working Listen, two jobs. That will promote <laughs> psychosis all day long. You would be amazed how many people come to the hospital with a mental health crisis. Wow. And it's basically because they're doing energy drinks, yeah. not sleeping. Oh um, and, 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 you know, those within a whole... I'm surprised ain't nobody. Well, I won't say this, but I've told patients, listen, eventually that's going to cause problems with your heart. Yeah. I've had one that told me he do five or six a day. Oh my that God. That was at a minimum. And I'm like, well, why are you doing so no. many? Trying to stay woke, trying to stay woke. But see, a lot of times when you have a substance abuser, they're going to substitute something else to self Mm -hmm. medicate and i tell them with those type of drinks when you pour them out into a cup look at the residue of what's pouring into mm -hmm. a lot of times it ain't good it's yeah. not now i'm gonna ask you this right here years ago which soda had lithium in it it probably was either coca pepsi or mountain dew mm -mm, seven up seven up I was never really a seven up drinker that much. Seven up. So you got to think years ago, we could have had a population of bipolar people that was managed by drinking a seven up. <laughs> what? Lithium, lithium is the gold standard medication for bipolar disorder. Yes, ma'am. Well, well, I got a couple bipolar people that I know I need to say next time I see you tripping. But no, they, they stopped it. Mm -mm, they discontinued <laughs> it. If you if you research it when once they um kind of I don't know got people got more understanding or wind of it, they stopped producing seven ups with the lithium. But wow. there was a time where lithium was inputted. And so listen, if we know that, how much more do we not know of what's in other things? Mm -hmm. Listen, when we look at some of these kids, some of the stuff they put in some of this food, we have yes. to wonder. Um, but again, we can have what we want to have. Right. Moderation is the key. Moderation. If we do moderation, you can do what you want to do. It's just that if you know, like we went to a restaurant the other day for my niece's birthday. And my stomach was touching my back by the time we was there. <laughs> so they brought that bread and they brought the cinnamon butter. I ate one piece and I was like, whoo, okay. Then I ate two pieces. Woo. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, the self-control piece of it, it's always going to be a challenge, but I just think it's certain receptors that automatically come on when we feel in some kind of way. Now, if I would have had a decent breakfast that morning, mm -hmm. I would have been okay, but I hadn't had a breakfast. And so you gotta do the, you gotta do, you gotta train yourself too because yeah. what happens is when you train yourself to eat a certain way, you won't even have the desire. Yeah. Even if you hadn't eaten, you won't even have desire because intermittent fasting. We have to. We are so used to consuming, consuming, consuming mm -hmm. that we don't know. We don't know how vital intermittent fasting mm -hmm. helps with us giving our digestive system a break. But you, you know, know the crazy thing in that, for the most part, and it's it's something that you said. The intermittent fast, and when I'm at work, I can get it done, and I probably eat once I get home. I eat at one time for dinner. I do water throughout the day, um, but other than that, I'm good. And then there's times like the weekends. I'd be like, okay, the weekends, let me just get in what I want to get in. But then when work week comes, same thing. So I know for me, juicing is like real quick, simple, and easy, yeah. but... My gallbladder was removed back in 2019. And again, wow. pay attention to your bodies. I was feeling tired, fatigued. So I went to my primary. We did labs. My cholesterol levers, my AST, my ALT, that oh, lets you know what your liver is doing. That You would have thought I was an alcoholic. What? That's just how bad my levels were. Then I was like, okay, well, let's get an ultrasound done so we can see what's going on with this liver. She agreed. We do the ultrasound. My gallbladder was porcelain, which means it was hardened and it needed to come out. Wow. Now, your appendix and gallbladder are two organs that you don't really need, but your gallbladder is a filter. So you have to know what you can eat, what you can't eat. Certain foods, if I eat it within 30 minutes, 
I need someone's restroom. And people don't realize. So for me, prolonged times or years of stress wow. or eating habits can contribute to that. So got the gallbladder removed, did my labs, labs came back down. Now, what if I didn't have enough common sense to go get my yearly, you know, physical with my baseline labs, which should be your hemoglobin A1C, checking for diabetes, your lipids, that's checking for your cholesterol, a CBC, checking your blood count, a CMP, making sure your liver function, potassium chloride, and all those things you want to need to do. How many of us and your thyroid panel, how often do we go and get those things done? Yeah. A lot of us don't. And so if I hadn't, and, and people say, oh, you work in the field, you know, we're the worst ones. We're the worst ones because, you know, you don't want to have to get a day off and your clients got to be rescheduled. Oh, no, no. I take my wellness days now. Yeah. And you have to. But once I've gotten that done, my eating habits have had to change because there's certain things I cannot eat. Um, fried foods, fatty foods just doesn't agree with me. Certain fruits and vegetables don't agree with me. And believe it or not, the older we get, we um, develop allergies to certain foods mm. and to certain medications. Mm. So if you know you're eating or drinking something and you know that you work out in hives or, um, you know, just different things are happening or you have more upset stomachs like diarrhea, um, more abdominal cramping, you better look at what you're eating because you may have mm. built up an allergy tolerance that you did not know. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. That wow, and you can actually your primary care provider can do labs. Um, it's different labs they can check for food allergies, environmental allergies, it's different allergies that they can check for. And um, I know for me, I'm allergic to insects, which is like your ibuprofen, the leaves, naproxen, aspirin. Um, mm -hmm. I'm allergic to all of those. Um, fruits that are kind of citrus, I'm allergic to those. Peanuts, wow, um, elm trees, dust. So, and I, I got my allergy tested in my thirties because I kind of felt like, man, wow. I eat certain stuff, chocolate. And this is the crazy thing. I have a delayed reaction of my allergies. Really? So I can eat it today, but it may not have an allergy until tomorrow or the day after. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's like I'm take the time to pay attention to your body. I think that's what... I think what happens is even with all the education, knowing how to apply that education to your situation. Me, I know my body. And when the slightest thing changes, I'm like, mm -hmm. something is up, you know, because I, I'm really, I know I can pinpoint everything I eat, drink. Mm -hmm. I'm very intentional with what I eat. So I know if something goes wrong with my body, I'm like, mm, it must have been something I ate, drank, mm -hmm. or something that I... Happen, I think about what I do during that day. I don't have a journal of what I do, mm -hmm. but I try to pay attention to what I eat and what I drink. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it can be tedious, but it's worth it because but the thing is, is that because you have slowed down enough to identify yeah. it, some of us have worked um like fast speed for so long that we don't take the time to identify those things sometimes until it's too late. That's true. Um, but we have to be able to have those times of just slowing down, mm -hmm. rest, rejuvenating, and, and identifying what we need to identify. And a lot of times we'll pass symptoms also, you know, just 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 nothing. And this is heart awareness month. So, mm -hmm. you know, real big on that as far as chest pain, chest discomfort, dizziness, your vision is changing. Um, you know, some things just aren't right. You have pain that's radiating, that's radiating from your shoulder down to your fingertips. Um, speech may change. All those things, A-line it or 911 to the hospital. And I tell mm -hmm. any and everybody, if you don't have any allergies, always keep a bottle of aspirin in your home because if anyone in your home is ever having symptoms of a heart attack you want them to be able to get an aspirin immediately even as you're calling for 911 those things is it, it, it means minutes to get to the point of care and never put it off as you're tired or you have gas because you don't know unless you go and get professional assessment and evaluation um, I can't stress that enough because individuals, men and women, are dying younger and younger for having MIs, myocardial infarctions, where they are, they've had symptoms for a couple of days, 
and has just brushed it off as nothing. Some people have gone to sleep, not waking up. Wow. And some have gotten to the hospital just in the nick of time. And then some have gotten to the hospital and they may have side effects that's not able to be reversed. So again, be in tune with your body, follow up with your primary care provider, have a good working relationship with your, pri your pr primary care provider. And if you feel some kind of way, never take it as, oh, I'm just tired today. You could be and then could not be. Right. Absolutely. Well, Monica, you have given us and an enormous amount of information and I am so I can't wait to go back and look at the and do the replay because you've given so much that can be used mm -hmm. you know for those of you that are watching if you have missed the first half you have got to go back and watch the replay she has given us a lot I feel like it's it's full of substance I feel like this broadcast is full of so many different things key things that you can do um, and pay attention to when it comes to your body we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we are going to have some final words with Dr. Monica Johnson, I almost want to call you Hardy. Like I almost like as so many times I've had to I've had to calm myself down from saying Monica Hardy like so many times, but we'll be right back after this. Careers is looking for customer service representatives needed to service their customers um, from home. If you're interested, please apply at www.ibgcareers.com. Let's work. I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I. Let's work. Yo, it's go time, show time, never back in downtime. One shot, yo, make it count, yo. Crunch time, shine time, make this moment my time. Are you a woman in need of wisdom? Do you sometimes battle with struck with separating who you are now versus who you feel like you ought to be? Do you question God's plan for your life? Is there a sense of uncertainty in the areas of choosing healthy relationships? Hi, I'm Nadira, CEO and founder of the Becoming a Woman of Proverbs Wisdom Academy. We offer classes and webinars in the area of life and business so that you can be equipped to succeed in the marketplace. For enrollment or for more information, please visit us at www.womenofproverbscoaching.com. And I'll see you on the inside.
we are back here at Sisterhood Check In with my special guest, Dr. Monica Johnson. We are in our final segment. And Monica, I want you to share with somebody that may be watching, that may be dealing with some of the things that we were discussing um, in the last segment. What would you say? What are your final words of encouragement that you want to give to those that may be watching that are dealing with things like suicide and um, not being able to rest, have psychosis, different areas of stress, and don't know how to manage that, not not sure how to manage their health, their family, not sure they may be, may be a woman watching that may be juggling a whole bunch of things. What would you say to those people that are watching to encourage them in those moments? Honestly, what I would say is this. No longer live your life to prove others right. Start to live your life to prove others wrong. Hmm. When you stay in the eyes um, or you stay in the view of what you think people um, want you to be or who you think you should be, if you don't have a prayer life, get a prayer life. And I'm going to tell you, there's times when you're in places when you don't want to pray. Been there, done that. But what I've had to learn is that you cannot always want to be the person that know it all, that mm. do it all and want to be it all yeah. because something is going to get missed. When you get to the point where you understand that my life, my choice, I choose to live unapologetically. One of the things that I really emphasize in my book is this May Day, M-A-Y-D-A-Y but I crossed the A out in the beginning to make it my day. Mm. Get to the point where you no longer need the affirmations of naysayers. You need the affirmation of yaysayers, which means people that are in your court, not outside of your court. Everybody that's in your space doesn't need to be in your space. Everybody that you feel is that confidant ear is not a confidant ear. Just as my good friend asked me about my fave five and I had to think about it, I had to think about it. But now by me thinking about it, I have a stronger support system. Have a stronger support system. Never think that you're crazy. Never feel that you cannot make it. Never feel that you have to continue to depend on other people and things mm -hmm. and know that you are human. Know that at the end of the day, much is given, much is required, whether you're giving and doing for somebody else or you're giving and doing for yourself. Mm -hmm. Know that you are in a season where you do matter. Yeah. What you say matters. Who you share it with matters. And make sure you're getting wise counsel. Everybody is not willing to hear you and hear what I say. People will listen to what you have to say, but you need someone who will hear you because the person that will hear you is the person that can help you. Mm. Identify those things that you need to identify with that you have not been able to let go. Mm. When you need to let go of it, that's the only way that you're able to grow from whatever the situation is. Whatever that past was, that's exactly what it was. As long as you keep looking back to it, that's where you're going to stay. When you hold on to something with all your might and you're not willing to let it go, well, guess what? You can't go forward. You can't go where you're called because if you have fear, we bind that up. If you feel like you're not going to be accepted, we bind that up. You have to honestly and earnestly know that the ladder that you need to climb, everybody can't climb it with you. You're going to need somebody to hold that ladder as you climb, and you're going to need somebody to be to the top to help you keep going. So choose those wisely that you do reach out to. If you're having an issue with abusive drugs, if you're in a relationship that's not a good relationship, if you're having health issues, if you're having mental health issues, if you're having spiritual concerns, Get wise counsel for those that may not have insurance, but still needs to go somewhere. If you're in the Jacksonville area, message me. You can inbox me. I will give you information. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm a tough love type of person. I told you before, I'm stern, but I love hard because I want to see people do better. If you're having thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself or hurt someone else, there's a suicide hotline that you can Google on your phone at any time and you're able to get assistance. 
If you're having those thought patterns that aren't good thought patterns, again, you're not crazy. Some things are by genetics and some things may be from an accident. Some things may be from trauma. It's okay to talk about it. It's okay to address it because things, whether it is mental or physical or spiritual, it's only an illness when we don't identify it. When we identify it and get appropriate treatment and timely treatment, then it becomes a wellness. And then we're able to not only help ourselves, but those that are the, that those that are attached to us. So again, no longer live your life to prove others wrong. It's what I needed to say the first time. Live your life to prove yourself right, which means what you think should be more important than what somebody else thinks that may not even know you and may not even have your best interest at heart. The mm -hmm. same time, love yourself more. It's okay. Have no guilt from it. Take control of what you need to take control of. Be honest with you. And when you're honest with you, you will be able to be the best you that you can be. Absolutely. Thank you so much for those encouraging words, Monica. Thank you for joining us here on Sisterhood Check-In. I appreciate the time. I know you're a busy woman. I appreciate you taking time out to be able to educate us about the importance of mental health awareness and making sure that we take care of ourselves first. If you guys have any, if you guys want to reach out to her, you can inbox her or you can reach her down at the website below, First Coast, www.firstcoastcommunitywellness.com. Thank you guys for watching so much. And I'll see you on Sunday here with Dinner with the Coaches. And if you have a testimony or if you have something that you want to share with us about your story, your life, make sure you send me an email at becoming a woman of proverbs at gmail.com and we'll have you here on the broadcast sharing your story to encourage others thanks guys for watching have a wonderful weekend i want you to remember that god god's created everything you see he breathed it into existence you remember when his people were caught up in slavery he rescued them. What he did was he parted the sea and he made a way for them and then he delivered their enemies to them and he unlocks wounds and he provides water from a rock and he provides manna from heaven and he brought down the walls of Jericho. He froze the sun allowing victory. He's toppled giants with tiny stones. He's brought fire from heaven. He shut the mouths of lions. He preserved life in the belly of a well. He's fed thousands with a few loaves. He gives the weak strength. He heals the sick. He's made the blind see, the deaf fear, the mute speak, the lame walk, and he's overcome evil, and he's made a way through death for you and me by the death and the resurrection of the Son, Jesus Christ, that we will live with him forever. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. What are we afraid of? His resume is flawless. He controls everything. And he loves you. Stop. I want it. I got it. 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 Right. That's a deal. Right. That's a bet. Right. That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Pay the plot in my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line. Bottom feeding niggas out of line. Turn your heart rate. That's right. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate plot in my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom.
IBG Careers is looking for customer service representatives needed to service their customers um, from home. If you're interested, please apply at www.ibgcareers.com. Let's work. I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord that I wake again. I wake again. I wake again. I pray the Lord that I. Let's work.